Hello there and welcome to Whistleblowers where we take a look at some of the interesting umpiring decisions from each week. I'm Nat Edwards and joining me today is 2012 and 13 grand final umpire Simon Meredith. Simon, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Nat. It's great to see you back umpiring and we'll touch on that a little bit later on in the show. But for now, let's get straight into it. And the first decision we're going to take a look at is from Saturday night's elimination final between North Melbourne and Essendon where kangaroo Levi Greenwood gave away a free kick and was reported for this collision with bomber Mark Bagley. The report was thrown out, but should this have been a free kick against Greenwood because he appeared to have his legs taken out by Bagley in a sliding motion? So in this instance, um, it's a correct free kick for a high tackle. Um, Bagley was on the ground and he doesn't make forceful contact to Greenwood's legs, okay. causing him to go to the ground. So what we're looking for is that bowling ball type of action, or in this case it doesn't happen, so it's a correct high tackle. So he didn't have that momentum going That's forward? That's right, yeah. All right, well, I guess this is a rule that sort of caused a little bit of confusion amongst not only coaches but fans alike. And we'll just have a look at another decision from that same game. Um, it's very similar. North's Aaron Black took bomber Michael Hibbard high, um, but it appeared again that Hibbard slid into Black's legs in this situation. So how is that different from the first one? So in this situation, it should be contact below the knees. Yep because the, um, the player here has made that bowling ball type of action. He's gone through with momentum, made forceful contact below the knees. Um, so that should be a, a contact below the knees free kick, okay. not a high tackle. So that was an incorrect decision That's there. Right. Yeah. All right, well, the third incident we'll take a look at was from Friday night's Hawthorne-Geelong qualifying final where Cat Steve Johnson was pinged for a block on Hawk Jordan Lewis at a stoppage. Now, Lewis appeared to try and go third man up in the ruck contest and I guess contact was within five metres of the ball. Did the umpire get this? one right? Yeah, so this is a correct decision. Um, Lewis is entitled to, to go for the ruck, yep. um, so he's, he should not be met or blocked out of that contest. Um, what we need to be aware is that um, Lewis is actually made with contact enough yep. to take him out of the contest, so players aren't just going to ground. Um, so in this instance, um, Johnson gets in there, blocks, blocks his run, so it's a correct free kick. Beautiful. Well, the next one happens to be a bloke from the same game involving Cat Jared Rivers and Hawk Jared Roughhead. Rivers appears to have his eye on the ball. Why was he penalised in this situation? So you can see Roughhead... Um, He's trying to contest the ball. Yep. Rivers makes no attempt to contest the ball. He takes a step into Roughhead and blocks his run um, and at no stage goes back to try and mark the ball. So in that situation, it's a free kick. Because he didn't push him out with his hands or no, anything? No, but he, he just takes his run away from the ball and doesn't try and contest it. OK, so right decision there. Yep. Now it's time to take a look at one of our favourite rules, Simon, on whistleblowers, and that's holding the ball. And we'll take a look at two incidents today. The first one is from Friday night's game where Cat Andrew Mackey is tackled by Hawk Luke Bruce. Now, Mackey doesn't seem to have that much prior opportunity. He takes a couple of steps there. Right or wrong decision? So that was correct play on call. Okay. Um, there's no prior opportunity, not enough to constitute holding the ball. So the player gets it, gets settled to take his kick pretty much straight away. He's attempting to kick it, um, so we believe play on's the right call. He does take three or four steps, though. It's not about steps. Not about steps. <laughs> not, about steps. <laughs> not always. All right, well, the second incident involved Tiger Dustin Martin, a similar one. He was brought down by Port's Brad Ebert in last Sunday's elimination final. How did you see this one? So this is uh, incorrect holding the ball. Um, he's actually even got less time than yeah. the Mackey one, so uh, we believe he's picked it up, tackled straight away, ball spills out, and he's almost trying to kick it, so play on. So it should have play on. Yep. All right, and the last one is a bit of a quirky one involving a very cheeky handball from Port's Robbie Gray. It's sort of a Harlem Globetrotters style effort between the legs, and it was called a throw by the umpire, but on slow-mo replay, you can kind of see that Gray looks like he gets a clenched fist to it. What did you make of this one? Yeah, I guess the umpire's <laughs> got to determine whether it's a clenched fist or an open hand. If it's an open hand, then it's a throw. Yep. Um, so uh, slow-mo can show up things, it can back you up and it can make you look silly. So uh, in that case, um, it looks like he's got a clenched fist, but I guess we just need to, to make the difference that if it's open palm, then it's a throw, otherwise... A it's a bit hard to tell between the legs as well. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time now to reveal the umpires for week two of the finals. And Simon, you're officiating the Geelong North Melbourne game alongside Matt Nichols and Troy Pennell, which is fantastic news. And in the Frio Port semi final, it's Matt Stevick umpiring his 250th game, D Margetts, Justin Schmidt, and a special mention as well to boundary umpire Mark Thompson in his 300th game. What an effort there. Oh, it's amazing. He's the only eighth, eighth boundary umpire to do it in the history of the game, so. Fantastic oh, effort. Fantastic. Now, um, let's just talk about, I guess, 
your, I guess, eventful season yes. 2014 and round 13, I believe it was the Sydney Port Adelaide yep. game that you went off the ground um, ill and you found out later that you had a, a bleed on your brain. Yeah. Obviously a very scary time for you and your family. Yeah, it was, especially yeah, I was stuck in Sydney for six nights, yeah. so uh, being away from home and uh, that first night, not sure whether I was going to get home or not, so that was uh, pretty scary for everyone, but um, thankfully it's uh, all worked out. We got back, um, you know, got the fitness back up and uh, annoyed the coaches enough so they gave me a game <laughs> eventually and uh, yeah it's great to be back and you know to get part of be part of finals you know it's all all a bonus. So. Well it's incredible to see you back was there a time that you thought maybe you wouldn't be get back this season to umpiring? Oh yeah for sure yeah for the first month I guess yeah I was, was wasn't sure where I was going to be but um, you yeah, know things health improved and things came along Fantastic. and, and uh, just being around the group makes you want to get out there and, and be part of it again so very lucky. And you're hoping for a third consecutive grand final? I'll worry about this one. <laughs> First, Matt, <laughs> One week at a time, that Absolutely. old line. Well, Simon, it's great to see you back and thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, Nat. Great. And thank you very much for joining us on Whistleblowers. We'll see you again next week.